Welcome back. Happy New Year's. We're back again. <laughs> right? We're going to keep saying it until the month of January is over, basically. Um, this episode is a, is a special one. It's, it's important. I shouldn't say special. It's an important one. Uh, it's a subject matter that uh, I've been thinking about quite a bit. And it's allowed me to kind of dive in a little bit. The research allowed me to kind of dig a little bit deeper and what that did for me was help me understand the people that I'm connected to a little bit better, just a little bit better, including myself, right? So I thought that was important. Uh, every now and then, we will experience a feeling of fear, uneasiness for many reasons, and stress is usually at the forefront in, in most of our cases, we don't always know the cause of these feelings, right? But they will pop up on you through, you know, just taking a test, for example. Some people get really nervous and uneasy and anxious, and that's the word. Anxiety is what I really want to talk to you guys about today. Uh, it's something that is prevalent, but in the community of mine, a lot of us ignore it. A lot of us don't know what to do with it. A lot of us don't know how to treat it, how to get help, and so forth. So that's a part of the reason why. And I also now have a greater understanding as to why people make some of the decisions that they make. Because they are going through something. And so this is just something that I wanted to kind of spend a few minutes on and, and shed some light on. And I hope that, you know, it's beneficial to somebody out there. Uh, other situations that people have difficulty with could be at work, right? And sometimes it's just all about making an important decision. And all of a sudden you get anxious with that, you know. So this is what I wanted to spend some time on. I go through it myself. I get anxious every time I got I to gotta write a new poem. I got to um, stand up in front of a group and speak. Um, I got to, you know, challenge somebody on an opinion that they shared that I thought was, um, not accurate or, or, you know, it didn't sit well with me maybe. Right. And so I have to address these things, but regardless, whenever I have to, you know, do something before someone other than myself, uh, it's very uncomfortable and that's where anxiety can creep up on you. Right. And it can do quite some damage if you allow it to occupy too much space within yourself. Another thing for me is being here with y'all, talking to you, starting this podcast, uh, talking to people that I, I may never meet. And sometimes I will. And so uh, it's it's tough. It's not easy. It's not easy. And and. The more and more I, I reach out to people to become guests, the more and more I'm realizing, especially after the pandemic, which is interesting. And I think it's connected, right? right rightfully so. Uh, but a lot of people say, let me think about it. I'll get back to you. Or I don't know if I can do that. I don't know. I don't know if it's for me, right? I don't know how, how I'm going to be able to do that. I'm nervous. Um, I've never done it before. And all these things, all these messaging that they're sharing with me is, is anxiety. It might be in its, you know, smaller forms. And for some, it might be, you know, way, way overwhelming that they can't consider themselves doing something like that. But uh, anxiety is like anything else. It, it's got its pros and it's got its cons. It can be very detrimental right? Or it can actually help you focus. It may give you a boost of energy, depends on what you're trying to do. And it can sometimes help you cope because you're so nervous. You, you get that uh, tunnel vision effect happening, right? Where you kind of zone in on something because you don't want to mess it up. And that's the anxiety talking to you, right? It's a little bit of fear in there too. So it's not always negative, but if the negative side of it, um, you know, overwhelms you or, or overcomes you, then I say go and get some help, okay? But I want to thank you for continue, your continued support. Uh, please follow the show uh, to get the followers up, the numbers up. I, I really 
could use that support. I appreciate you listening. Um, I also want more people to listen to the episodes and, and the show. So sh- spread the word, right? Spread the word, share the episodes. Uh, check out the YouTube channel. It's up and running. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, by the way, just to click a button or two and, uh, you know, like something or share something. You may not like it, but you can share it, right? Uh, it means the world to me. So I want to thank you in advance for all the love that I know you're going to share. Um, now, let's get back to it. So anxiety is, <laughs> it's a common mental health condition, actually, right? A lot of people don't realize that it is uh, or realize how common it is, but it's very, very common. Um, and it can have significant impact on anyone, right? Anyone. It affects millions of people around the world, in fact. What are some of the forms of anxiety you might ask yourself? This is some of the questions that I asked myself. So I went digging and, you know, I got some information. So I want to share that with you. Uh, there are different forms. We have what's called a general um, anxiety disorder. And some people kind of use a, the short handle for it, which is GAD. And we have phobias. A lot of people have phobias. I have a phobia of heights. Don't put me on anything higher than 10 feet. I'm, I'm you know, because I feel, I feel like if I can't land on my two feet without breaking them, I shouldn't be up there. <laughs> that's that's my phobia, right? And uh, the other one is just a panic disorder. So you may not necessarily have all three. Some people have all three. Some people have two. Some people just have one that you're battling, right? But we all have them at different periods in our lives. And that's, that's something that I want to kind of shed some light on, that mental health is not something that's, you know, uh, presents itself to just one group of people or particular individuals with certain circumstances. No, as long as you're alive and breathing, it's just like a headache. It's just like a, mi- a migraine. It can come and it may go in some instances and sometimes it's there for a lifetime, you know, or an extended period. So a person with a general disorder um, is someone who is constantly worried about the everyday issues, Right. Like their health, uh, the money, uh, do they have enough Um, and work? Do do they like work? Are they concerned? Are they going to be fired? They're they're always in this fear. Relationships. Am I a good partner? Uh, Who do I want to be with? Can I even get in a relationship? Why can't I get in a relationship? Is it because of this part of me and so forth? Family. Why don't I have the same, you know, relationship like um, these two members of my family uh, why do I have to be the one that feels like I'm an outsider in my own family, right? All these little things, these are the voices that we hear and, and the things and the situation that we create for ourselves to justify why we do the things we do, like staying away from people and, and so forth, right? This can go on daily for individuals who suffer from anxiety disorders, right? Daily. And then it can, like I said, it can go on for months, Right? So oftentimes it lasts half a year, a year for, I guess, the average, not the extreme, but the, those of us who don't necessarily have the, the I guess, the extreme side of, of, of uh, anxiety, right? So, but the point I'm trying to make is it's, it comes and it goes, but sometimes it sticks around a little bit longer than you would like, right? Now... <clears throat> Someone who suffers from phobia, like myself, right, uh, experiences intense fear of things with practically little to no actual danger, right? So you might have a phobia for, some people have phobias for spaces, tight spaces, uh, spiders or bugs, right? Uh, Some people have a phobia of getting on an airplane. That's a real thing, right? Right? Some people don't like clubs or small spaces. Some people don't like to be in spaces where there's only one door. <laughs> right? Sometimes I just don't want to be there. And if I am, I want to be I want to be the closest person to that door. Okay? Just so in case I need to get out, I can get out. But um some people have phobias where they don't attend social events because that means they would have to interact with other people. And that's where they struggle, right? People have phobias for almost 
anything that you can, you know, think of under the sun. So phobia is one of those things that can kind of sneak up on you. And it can also be something that you had from when you were a child, but it didn't really present itself or, or occupy the, the, the forefront of your of your mind or your, your being, right? So now that you're growing up, you're starting to realize, oh, I don't like that feeling or I don't like being here. I don't like being in this setting. I don't like people who are loud. I don't like spiders. I don't like ladybugs. Simple things, right? But they are major to that individual who is experiencing that phobia. So something to keep in mind. Uh, the third person, for example, with uh, who's suffering from panic disorder, experiences what I can describe as a sudden but repeated stretches of immense fear, right? Where they may not be in any danger, but these attacks make them feel like they, they might be, right? So they come quick. Sometimes they last for just a few minutes. And sometimes they stick around for a little bit. Why? That feeling of, oh my gosh, what's going on, right? And and the fast breathing, uh, your heart, you know, their heart starts to thump a little bit faster and harder. Um, they break out in sweats. Some of them, they breathe, you know, a little bit heavier and faster. And you can see some of these things showing up when someone's having a, a panic attack, right? Uh, if you ask somebody who doesn't speak in public to stand up and speak, that can be detrimental to that person, right? So something to consider when we are in various settings trying to get other people to come out of their shell. You got to be careful because if they came out of that shell and you're not prepared to administer any aid or assistance, you might have just caused a little bit more damage by pushing them too far, right? There is a comfort zone. A lot of us love to stay there. Sometimes when we're forced out of that too quickly, right? When I mean too quickly is is not at our, our pace that we're comfortable with. That can be detrimental to, to the individuals, okay? But with all those three disorders that I just described, which one of these have you personally experienced in the past, right? I want you to think about that and, and how did you cope and what assistance or resources were you able to access? If you can think of those things while you're listening to this, write them down somewhere. I think it'd be great if you were able to actually go on the uh, Podbean app or on the YouTube channel and kind of share the resources so that other people can kind of get access to that and, and be able to, you know, take care of themselves if they're in that situation, right? So please go ahead and do that. It doesn't cost you much, but know that you are helping somebody out there. And I want to thank you in advance for that. People with anxiety can experience different symptoms, right? And I mentioned a few of them, right? With the heart racing, which is a physical thing, the rapid breathing. Sometimes it could be an upset stomach, right? You can have uh, contractions in your stomach or uh, some pain in your stomach because you're anxious. Your stomach just tightens up on you, right? I remember that feeling vividly every time I had to take the stage to perform one of my poems. It was tough, right? About 10 minutes before you get on that stage and, and face the audience, stomach, no matter who or where it is, my stomach always twists. To this day, it still does. And it's just about repetition. The more I do it, the easier it gets, the less tight my stomach gets. But it still gets wheezy and, and un uncomfortable. But it gets better, okay? Um, but that's anxiety. That's being nervous. That's being scared. That's being, you know, fearful of what may come, the danger that you create in our minds and, and it takes hold of our bodies, right? But uh, these symptoms can make it very difficult, okay? Uh, in, in so many different areas, it can make it hard for you to concentrate, sleep, right? You might end up going through some sleep deprivation and even just performing your daily tasks. It may, you may not be motivated or inspired to get up and do anything, right? Because of the anxiety. And so it has real impact on, on, on people. Uh, anxiety affects us both emotionally, right? We just talked about the physical aspect of it, but emotionally as well, 
and pardon me, psychologically, right? It can present itself as a feeling of, you know, low self-esteem, a little bit of self, you know, self, self-doubt, a lack of confidence in yourself. People suffering from anxiety avoid certain situations and activities because they don't want to put themselves out there. And that's the anxiety doing a lot of the work um, alongside, you know, the cousin of anxiety, which is sometimes fear. And it limits their ability to socialize. It limits their ability to actually work and pursue some of their goals, right? So it can really be something that holds a lot of us back. Um, in severe cases, though, anxiety can, you know, obviously interfere with your ability to function daily. So imagine um, my anxiety is so, so strong that I don't leave my house. Right. But my my career or my livelihood depends on me going out and meeting people. Let's say I'm a salesperson. How do I how do I now survive? Right. How do I survive? So it's a twofold situation. It can lead to great depression. Or addiction. Right. And the addiction comes from coping mechanisms. Right. You're trying to run away from it or, or get away from it. Uh, and so you find yourself being addicted to something else that may help you uh, with small fixes or quick fixes. But then before you know it, with time, you're now addicted to this fix that you were using for you know short moments. It's now become a part of your daily routine. It is now your daily routine. Now what do you do? Right? Um, I don't, <clears throat> I don't want to beat the negative in your head. I just want you to understand how important it is to, to pay close attention to some of these signs. Right? I'm going to share some tells with you uh, in a brief moment, but I just wanted to plant that seed. The positive thing is there are many effective treatments available for anxiety. Yay! <laughs> Some good news, right? Derek just beat us over the head with all this negative stuff, but that's just the effects of anxiety. But you can get treatment for it, right? Therapy um, helps. Medication uh, helps. And obviously adopting some sort of self-help techniques, right, that you might get from specialists and other resources, okay? Get the help of a mental health professional. That's, that's important. One of the first steps is that, right, um, getting that help professionally and then managing your anxiety and improving your mental health. And that will then lead to you improving your quality of life, Okay. So the question you might be thinking, because I was thinking it, um, what causes anxiety disorders? And I thought that was a key question. I think that's important, right? Uh, again, share your thoughts. I want to know what you think cause you know, anxiety disorders. But no one really knows what causes anxiety. But... Through some studies that I came across, it can be factors like genetics, stress is definitely there. Stress is, you know, the stress is at the center of a lot of things, right? Our ailments and, and diseases and, and health issues stem from stress, right? Stress doesn't mean something heavy that's coming down on you. It can be as simple as something is making you uncomfortable, and your body reacts to that. It's a chemical imbalance, right? The body responds to that uneasiness and releases defense um, you know chemicals within the body and sometimes those chemicals literally cause you more harm because they're trying to protect you from what they think is dangerous and that danger might just be another organism that was doing something a little bit out of character but necessary right and then all of a sudden now you got a problem with internally so take that analogy and kind of Think about your body in that sense. Um, your environment, right, can also cause anxiety. 
and brain and biology and chemistry, right? This is what I'm talking about with the body responding, um, have been identified as contributors. So it's not just the internal, but it's also your external surroundings that can have an impact on you. Uh, people with anxiety may find it difficult to focus on, you know, just a single task, right, for an extended period of time. And, and it makes it challenging for them to complete schoolwork, uh, work assignments or projects. And this may obviously and can lead to feelings of frustration and overwhelmed and feeling of, you know, being overwhelmed with something. And, and that decrease in pro productivity automatically impacts your confidence, now you have this self-doubt of, can I even do this job? Right? Can I finish this assignment? Am I good enough? Why did I say I, I, you know, I wanted to take this on? And you start to question. This is anxiety doing its thing, right? Sometimes we identify anxiety as fear, right? So this is something to definitely have in the back of your mind, okay? And who is at risk for anxiety disorders, is it men or is it women, right? Who is more at risk? And it's fair to say that obviously we're both at risk, men and women, right? But for different forms, it varies. For example, the, the general anxiety and the phobias are more commonly identified in women. Right. Uh, a woman might not be able to complete her daily tasks because she's battling anxiety, self-confidence, self-identity. Uh, maybe if it's a mother, then she might feel like, you know what, um, she should have been able to do this for her child. But she's lacking the confidence or the energy and therefore um, she doesn't feel like she has you know, the capability of being the best mother that she's created in her mind. Right. Or that they can't function without the other half of this child's, you know, parenting uh, unit. So if the father is not in the picture, that might be something that creates a bit of anxiety for that person. Or if they feel they were the reason why the father had left. Now, that burden plays a role. Right. It makes them a little bit anxious um, and they stress themselves out and so forth. Or they might just be. You know, a father that's behind on bills, single father or two parent home and they're, you know, behind bills, income's just not enough. They're fighting this and that and, and the fear of, oh, I might lose my home or my apartment or uh, my car might get, you know, repossessed. And so all these little things create this anxiety. Right. And then all of a sudden it snowballs. And before you know it, hey, we're in trouble. OK, um, but social anxiety affects both men and women uh, equally. OK, so that's something to keep in mind. Anxiety can also have a negative impact on a person's relationship, like, you know, intimate relationship or family relationships. People with anxiety may have a hard time uh, forming and, and maintaining close relationships. They have, their anxiety causes them to kind of like avoid that social situation right i don't want to go out to dinner why because then other people might see me right i'm not happy with who i am today uh maybe tomorrow right and then tomorrow comes and what do they say no today's not a good day they'll find another reason and another reason and another day will go by and so forth and it just keeps going before you know it they never leave the house they're never outside okay that is anxiety they're avoiding social situations so that they don't have to deal with whatever judgment that they've fabricated in their minds that other people are going to have of them. Oh, look at her. Why does she look like that? Why does she wear that outfit? Right? And so they create that withdrawal from others. Uh, and, and that's their way of coping. But it's as you can see, it's not a positive thing. Because then the question becomes, when will you ever come, out, come outside? When will you ever take that step? If it's predicated on what other people think, which you have no control over. 
what do we do? Right? And that's where this thing can lead to isolation and loneliness. And we all can assume, because I've assumed, I've made that assumption that when a person is constantly isolated or alone, it leads to all the bad things that we see and hear about, you know, people ending their time here on earth with us. Right? So with that said, I just want you to kind of think about the people in your circles, your strong friends or your weak friends, uh, your distant friends and your close ones, the family members, your loved ones, and all of them. Try to give them a call just to check in. Say, hey, how's it been? It's a new year. Around this time, everybody's kind of going through this debt situation where they spent so much for the holidays that they got to you know, try to clear these credit cards off, right, and so forth. Some people fell, fell behind on some payments, um, you know, and, and so forth. So it's been rough, right? And I, I mean, when I say that, I'm speaking for me as well. And so it's important to check in on some people because the reality is overall, anxiety is very real. It's happening to every single one of us at any point. Um, in our lives, in the past, and it's going to happen again. It doesn't just go away forever, right? Uh, but it's definitely a serious and, and um, debilitating disorder that can have a negative impact on many aspects of, of, of our lives, right? So take a moment, check, check in on, on those people that you care about. Now, I mentioned some treatments that you can um, get for your anxiety disorder, I want to share some of those with you, okay? So, cognitive behavior therapy can definitely help you, right? It'll help you identify and change negative thought patterns that contribute to your anxiety. Because it really starts in the head. Everything starts from the head, okay? A lot of things start from the head. Uh, meditation is going to help with that as well. Um, but another word that rhymes with meditation is medication, <laughs> such as, right, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication can also help reduce those symptoms. Something very manageable or, or doable is lifestyle changes. So some things that you're going to have to change about the way that you conduct yourself every day, right? Uh, maybe regularly exercising. Um, there's a book, I believe it's called Spark. I can't remember the author's name, but it's a nice book because it ties in the mental, uh, the spiritual, as well as the exercising and how all those components actually help with, I guess, us human beings in functioning in a healthy um, capacity, right, on a regular basis. So exercise is very key. Uh, healthy eating is going to be essential to you and practice relaxation techniques, right? So that's where the meditation comes in, heavy breathing, slow breathing, um, you know, kind of calming your body down and, and, you know, help manage that anxiety as well. So those are some things that you can do. Now, if you or someone you know is struggling with anxiety, it's, it's very important, and I want to stress this. It's very important uh, to seek help from a, a medical or, or mental health professional. With the right treatment and support, it's, it is very possible to manage and reduce anxiety symptoms and improve your overall like, well, well-being, right? And that should be the goal. And that should be the goal. But I hope you found it beneficial because I want to leave you with this and I hope you know you you found this episode informative and resourceful and that it gave you a little bit of hope um, or a little bit of something I just hope it gave you something and if you got something from it listen let someone else get something from it okay now <clears throat> for anyone suffering from any form of anxiety hang in there don't quit the fight because everything will always come to pass. And so what you're going through, this too shall pass, right? Find the courage and the strength and let the people in your world 
that care about you and that, you know, are ready and willing to help you get through or manage your anxiety that you trust, feel safe around you, right? Let them help. Allow them in. Let them come in so they can do what they want to do, which is help you become a much better individual, okay? So please go ahead and subscribe. Follow the show and share the episode. It means a lot to me. It helps me grow the show and it allows me to provide you with all this content. And as always, until next episode, Love, peace, and happiness.